the C47, and the C47 is basically a brand that focuses on teaching the craft of video production and filmmaking. So NAB, for instance, is a show that I've now taught at for 14 years, and um, I'm basically teaching every single day at a conference called the Post-Production World Conference, and I teach lighting, camera, um, camera movement, all kinds of things. And because I do produce, and I also am also an educator, one of the nice things is that I have been producing a lot of content for companies that are within the industry. So I've produced over 70 videos for Canon. Um, currently, there's a series that's just been launched that profiles the uh, filmmaker Ryan Connolly of Film Riot, and we did a behind the scenes of a short that he just shot in Texas. Um, but I also do work for Westcott, uh, Monfrotto, uh, Tiffin Companies, all, lots of different companies I'm producing content for, Zeiss. I'm not always in front of the camera, sometimes I'm behind the camera. And then there's my um, website, which you can visit, which is thec47.com, and I generally post information about the industry, educational content, and then I also hold a biannual filmmakers program called the Filmmakers Intensive, and this year it will be held in North Carolina at the end of June. So that's my uh, story, and I'm sticking to it, and you guys kind of get the idea of sort of what I do. And what I wanted to do in this session was talk to you a little bit about um, what I think about in terms of mobile production, in terms of the fact that nowadays we don't have this opportunity to have crews that are five to 10 to 15 people. And we're very oftentimes in situations where we're in crews that are large of three people. And we're also working in crews of two and in crews of one where you have to do every single job. So for me, the goal is always to figure out how can I make production more efficient and how can I make production easier and get good, consistent results? How many of you are actually lighting on a regular basis in production? Okay, so I mean, it's, a, it's really the cornerstone of how we make things look. We create mood through lighting. And, you know, here we are in, not necessarily on the B&H stage, but here we are in the biggest broadcast show in the world and we probably have the worst lighting that you could possibly have in this hall. And so it, it becomes very difficult to, to control that light um, unless you have the right tools. And in a space like this, it's really, really difficult. But what I really want to talk to you about is that small crew production where we're going and we're trying to show up at the location and how do we get consistently really good results when we're doing that. Um, so. Basically, I started using, along with a lot of other products, a lot of other lighting instruments, I started using Westcott's products um, quite some time ago. And they have had a frame-based system called Scrim Gym that has been around now, Dave, is it 25, 30 years? Yeah, so about 35 years. And it's a, it's a frame-based system. It looks not completely unlike what I'm going to show you today. Um, which initially was designed and was adopted by the still photography industry. Uh, because of the versatility of the frames, they also started to go into rental houses and started to be used by people in video production and filmmaking. And basically you just build a frame, you put a fabric on it, and you can either, you can bounce your light, you can diffuse your light, you can cut your light, you know, you can block your light, so you have all of these because of the fabrics, this flexibility in the system. So I was using the Scrim Gym system, and I was working with this in my classes and also on jobs. And Westcott is a sponsor of mine for the C47. And I called them up and I said, um, I love these Scrim Gyms, but I would really love to see some changes so that this system could work really, really well for the video production and filmmaking market. Well. Westcott had also been thinking about this at the same time, and it was kind of, I guess, a, a pretty good, happy uh, meeting of the minds. And about 10 months ago, I started to work with Westcott very, very intimately on trying to create a new system. It doesn't negate the old system, which is still there and still available, 
but a new system that was really geared towards video production and filmmaking. And also try to solve some problems that I was seeing as both an educator and somebody in production as a producer, director, and DP, um, having to do with the portability or lack of portability in lighting control systems. Additionally, at the same time, Westcott um, came out at almost exactly the same time. They came out with the Flex Light, and we're looking at one of them over there on the stand. That's a new bicolor version of the Flex Light. And I'm going to talk to you about Flex in a minute, and I'm going to talk to you about it in conjunction with this new lighting control system, which is called Scrim Gym Cine. So we have the original Scrim Gym line, and now we have the Scrim Gym Cine line. And this is basically the base system. And what I've actually done is created two entire kits that are based on the Scrim Gym Cine line, and I designed them for very specific reasons. And what we're looking at here is more than a sneak peek. You can go to the Westcott booth here at the show and really see this stuff in depth, but we're still looking at sort of almost final product. Okay, so you're getting to see this now. We're just getting last minute feedback from all of my colleagues and peers. And then uh, by the time Cine Gear comes around at the beginning of June, you can have these in your hands and you can actually be using them in production. So right now, what we're talking about here is a positive locking connection system. So we have tubes inside of Scrim Gym Cine that are different lengths. And there are three lengths that are part of the system. We have 10 inch tubes. There are 22 inch tubes, and then there are 46 inch tubes. And then when you use straight connectors to put them together, which we'll talk about, and you use corner connectors, you basically have an erector set that allows you to build different frames of different sizes for different applications. So you can do a tremendous amount with these. This happens to be three sides of a two by two frame. So what we've got is we've got a 22 inch tube here, and we have two corner connectors, which are one inch. So that makes up 22, 23, 24. So now we have a two foot wide frame. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this up. And here we have the final piece of this frame. And I just can line this up. And the beautiful thing about this is that once these are in place with the positive locking system, then you basically, this thing's not gonna go anywhere. We can collapse it down. Um, this again, 22 inch rods. This will fit in checked luggage. Um, if you're a little sneaky about it, you might be able to get it into your carry-on because it's sort of right there on the edge. But you can see I now have this two by two frame. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, aircraft grade aluminum, but the fact that, and this is really borrowed from and taken from the original Scrim Gym line, we have a Velcro based system. So on this side, we have Velcro. And if you have ever used the original Scrim Gym, you'll know that one side of the frame has Velcro on it. One of the things that I wanted to see is I wanted to see a double Velcroed frame because not only does that make it easier for you to carry two fabrics on the same frame when you're moving to a location or doing something, sometimes you want to double up fabrics. So I could put a net to cut light. I could put another net here so I can double them up. I could have basically two diffusion panels here. So you have a lot of opportunity to use this system in many, many different ways. This over here is a prototype of one of the frames that I've designed. You'll see that this particular one, and this is not the final product, this is a four foot by four foot frame. And this is using the 46 inch tubes. But the final book like, I'm sorry, the final DP kit, four by four frame, will actually be built using eight 22 inch tubes. So the advantage to that for everybody who does production and travels, even locally, is that you can break down this entire kit into 22 inch lengths, but you can build a four by four frame. If you've ever used a four by four frame in production, um, there are not a lot of solutions that allow you to travel easily with these things. So now you can actually have a four by four frame that can fit in check luggage. The other thing that I really wanted to solve, and I'm just gonna flip this over to show this to you, is I wanted to make sure that the fabrics that were included in this kit, the DP kit, were fabrics that we would wanna use on a regular basis. There's stuff that you show up, you don't wanna have to figure out what the fabrics are gonna be. So the first thing is we have, to me, the big thing 
is we have what's called a floppy cutter. Does anybody know what a floppy cutter is? Okay, so a floppy cutter is used for negative fill. It's also used to block light. And we have a four by four. This is basically 12 ounce duvetine, okay? And what happens is you open this up and now our four foot by four foot becomes a four foot by eight foot, okay? If you've ever used a floppy cutter, you know that the floppy cutter is usually a rigid four foot by four foot frame. Try fitting a four foot by four foot frame into any vehicle and it's not easy. Um, try to travel with a four foot by four foot frame that's rigid and it's impossible. So the idea is have a frame based system that you can put in your check luggage but you can actually travel with a four by four floppy cutter. That's huge. That's something that I haven't had before. I haven't had that opportunity. And to have to go to a rental house just to you know, get floppy cutters, that's a real pain, right? So that's one of the fabrics that comes with this. One of the fabrics that comes with this I don't actually have, which is a one-stop diffusion, but that's also a pretty standard thing that we would want to use with a frame like this. So we've got a one-stop diffusion that also comes with this kit. And so that's obviously going to be used to diffuse light. So we're going to push light directly through it. And the beauty is when we're using these newer camera systems, these large sensor camera systems, we don't necessarily need to have light sources that have as much output as we did in the old days. We don't have to have these super, super powerful lights, but we still need to control that light. We need to place it. We need to create the source of light that we want. And a four foot by four foot frame is a very, very popular size for a lot of different applications. Whether you want to just do a stand up or sit down interview and get Rembrandt lighting, so you basically have the light and you push a light through it, so you get that little triangle. Or if we want to go ahead and do this, which is, this is a silver and then there's white on the other side of this. So we got, I mean, sorry, there's a silver and then a white. Generally put this up on a C stand with a clamp and then we can take a hard light source um, and LEDs will work well when they basically are naked like that. We can push that into here and then we can bounce the light back onto our subject. You can also use four by four frames in narrative. Um, these play a lot outside of windows when you're using light sources like HMIs. So you'll go ahead and either push an HMI directly through a diffusion panel or you'll actually bounce the light off of it and then bring that light back into the space. So we can get really beautiful, basically, you know, that northern light that we like to see and we have to simulate in production. Um, another feature of the DP kit is it is four feet wide. And four foot wide is kind of secret sauce because if you go and buy four foot wide rolls of Roscoe or Lee diffusion, you can actually very simply just put Velcro on the corners and you can skin this frame with your favorite 216 Opal, Soft Frost, whatever you want. So you're going to get the fabrics that come with the kit, which again, they're going to be the silver white, the one stop diffusion and the four by eight floppy cutter. But you can also just take this frame and you can skin it with your own gels and diffusion as well because four foot is standard. I don't know actually the final weight, but it's very, very lightweight. Basically what we tried to do is we tried to build a frame that was a frame that I would call something that we don't want to just market to the owner operator. We want it to be strong enough that it could live in a rental house. And that's really important. Um, we beat equipment up when we're in production. And even though it's cared for well, you're talking about equipment. And you know, if you've been in production for a while, there will be situations where you hire a PA who may be a little green and the PA gets put in charge of loading the vehicle. And when they load the vehicle, a Pelican case goes down on the frame. And so even though best practices are usually held, uh, that's not always the case. So again, um, a really sturdy frame-based system. So this 4x4 DP kit is really exciting to me. Um, this is going to actually come with a grip head. It'll come with a clamp. 
it'll come with a case and again it comes with this entire frame and and, and the key to this to me is that it's the 22 inch tubes so again we're looking at a prototype here but the final version of this will be eight 22 inch tubes so you can just fit it into your check luggage um, I'm really excited about this, so this is uh, good. And we'll have time for a and a session as we, we get into this. You guys can ask me about lights, you can ask me about cameras, you can ask me about Westcott stuff, but you can also ask me about C300 Mark IIs and FS7s, I don't care, whatever you want to talk about. Um, so this is the 4x4 frame. So I'm very, very excited about this, and I am going to, uh, we can, can I hand this to you, Dave, is that all right? We can kind of get this out of the way for now. I'm tethered here, guys. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, so that's kind of the first piece. Yes. Um, I think we're trying to target that entire kit for about $599. Um, and to me, that's around the right price range. You know, we always want things to be less, but we also have to figure out and make sure that the you know the kit is of the quality and has the things that people will want. So you'll start to see a lot of content that will go up on the FJ Westcott website, which is fjwestcott.com. Um, there'll be stuff up on the C47 as well. We'll start to see the product show up on b &H's site in the very near future, May 15th. Um, and the goal is, Cine Gear is at the beginning of June. We are hoping that these are shipping by the beginning of June. Um, we want to make sure that the products are right. This is not a system that we are trying to design and say, next year we'll give you a new version of the system. We are really spending a lot of time testing this out and getting feedback and trying to make sure that we're making the most versatile lighting control system that we can. Um, and this is you know, sort of the beginning of all of that. So I think I'm gonna segue now. I'll talk about the ice light in a minute. That's not necessarily the core focus of this, though I do really like that light. Um, I'm going to talk to you about that book light kit in a few minutes. That's another part of this whole system, and that's something that I worked with Westcott on designing. Um, so the DP kit is, is a product that's under the C47 name. Um, but again, we have Scrim Gym Cine, which is the entire system. So you have to understand that, that, that my two kits are part of the Scrim Gym Cine system and they're designed for well for all of us so that you don't have to sit there and figure out what fabrics you need and all of the different size configurations though you can do that and you can build upon it and it's a very very expandable system but good starting points for a lot of this stuff so I want to segue now um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about this so this is the flex light and this is not something that a lot of people have seen. Um, they've seen the original flex light in a 10 by 10 form factor, and it's a completely bendable light system. Um, you could call it weather resistant. It's practically weatherproof, but you can't say that. Um, so we're gonna say weather resistant. But I've run these things, don't tell Westcott, but I've run these things under uh, taps of water and all kinds of stuff, and they just keep working. And we wanna see products that we can do that. And what's interesting about this, and I'm just going to go ahead and actually we'll just set this up again in a minute. What's interesting about Flex is when you look at it because of the flexibility of the system, I think that there's a, a tendency to think that it's not built well because it is bendable. Um, it's, actually, it's actually the opposite. This thing is virtually indestructible. Um, at least based on my experience. Again, I'm not saying that Westcott says it's indestructible, um, but we have rolled these things up and they've been banged up and everything. Um, I've actually, at one point, worked with one that had a LED, the entire rest of the panel is working. Um, I'd say the most fragile thing on the entire flex light are probably these connectors right here. That's probably the most fragile thing. But they are designed to and they are meant to be used this way so that you can take this and you could just take a couple of A-clamps and we could A-clamp this together and you could create the world's largest china ball. If you wanted, just drop it in. There's other sizes. This two by two is really kind of ridiculous and, and amazing. So once you get above a certain size, 
of light in the LED world. And regardless of what kind of LED light it is, the one thing that you have to understand is if you want flicker free, you have to have a ballast. Okay? So that is a trade off. Not really. I mean, you know, you want flicker free light. So um, the largest size that we can go to with flex, thank you very much. Yeah, let's just put it on the floor for now. We'll kind of figure this out in this incredibly large stage we're working with here. Um, this is a one by two flex light, and it is sitting inside of Scrim Jim Cine. So we still get to just rip this thing off and gaff tape it to walls and do whatever we want, but when we're in a situation when we need to grip this thing, then we can just build a one by two Scrim Jim Cine frame, and then Bob's your uncle. That's it. And this is amazing, by the way. Um, I did a lot with Westcott to give feedback and work with them on this system. But when I went there last Tuesday, um, I saw that they're putting this on the frame pieces. This is a 3 8 female tap. So can you imagine with each of these frame pieces that every single frame piece has a 3 8 female tap in it? what you can do, what you can rig off of this thing. That's basically redonkulously awesome insanity right there as far as what you can do. And I'm really happy that it's 3 8 and not quarter 20 because it's a little bit of a beefier connection. So this was really exciting to see this when I saw this for the first time. So we will see that in the final product. We'll see that tap for a 3 8. Um, so let me get back to what I was saying. Largest size you can have without a ballast is in the flex line is a one, a one foot by two foot size, okay? So we have a 100 watt dimmer there. Um, we can run this thing off of a battery if we want, um, which we do have, which I'll show you guys in a couple of minutes. And this sucker is bright. I mean, we might as well strike this light. I think it's up. Let's see what happens. Is it? Are we, are we? Yep, there we go. So tungsten version, that's your light. We can get a lot of light output out of that. Um, really, really nice overall in this form factor. So I like the one by two. I've, I've got my favorites. The one by two plays for me, but it's, it's not the one that I'm gonna go to most of the time, but I really like it. I am gonna go to this two by two. This is a 200 watt. Generally, LED technology has a, about a 10 to one efficiency in terms of what we would get light output wise from it compared to a tungsten fixture. So if this is a 200 watt draw, how much are we getting? We're getting about a 2K tungsten equivalent light output. That's pretty crazy, right? It's got a ballast over there. Um, we'll set it up in a second so we can actually see what it's like. But this is to show you how the frame based system works. So we have this all of the sizes inside of the flex line, except for the 10 by 10, which is sort of your little itty bitty one that you can just throw in bags. Well, the 12 by 12s are itty bitty also. Uh, and by the way, the only difference between the 10 by 10 and the 12 by 12s is the 12 by 12 has this strip of Velcro on it so that you can attach it to a 12 by 12 Scrim Jim Cine frame. The light output is exactly the same in daylight and in tungsten, so you should know that. All right, so I know you guys are excited now. Come on, you're gonna come over and check this stuff out. We don't, we don't say things like game changer here. Oh, wait, I just did, no, I didn't say it. I don't like to use those words. Um, so you can see, that's it, okay? So now we have a two by two light in a frame, and if I need to, and I, I don't want to bounce this light or I don't want to build a bigger frame in front of it, then just to give it a little diffusion. Now this is, this is a one stop, and this is actually the one stop diffusion that you'll get with the DP kit. So that other fabric, it'll basically be this fabric here. Um, I actually prefer the, uh, the half grid cloth, and Westcott makes a half grid cloth. They make a one stop, they make a one and a quarter stop diffusion, they make a three quarter stop diffusion. Um, they make silver, they make silver gold, they make single and double nets, they make, well, they make all the stuff that we need. Um, and if you don't like the stuff, then go get a sheet of 
the fusion and cut it down to the frame and use it. Pretty easy, right? So that's a two by two. So now we're gonna, we're gonna just go ahead and mount this sucker. Um, just a grip head and I'm gonna, those are tiny sensor cameras. They actually need a light like this. So I'm gonna actually set it up because I don't know, I would say uh, at best those cameras that they're using to shoot this are two third inch chips. Those are not honking big uh, super 35 millimeter sensor ones. Maybe I'll swing it up to the ceiling. I won't, I, you guys need to feel the light a little. And of course, basically zero heat, right? So when we're talking about using any of these lights, and this is not a new story, but anytime we use LEDs, you know, um, hair and makeup doesn't have to come in very often because the only time people are sweating is if they're nervous, not because of the actual heat. Um, so let me, let me actually swing this up. It's just to, I won't torture you completely. Um, so two by two. I think we're plugged in here. I didn't set this one up, but let's see. Oh my, come on. Look at that. Pretty exciting, right? So can you imagine bouncing that light? That's pretty cool. I know you guys are excited. And uh, really, really nice, high CRI. They've actually tested this light. It's been in there with all the big boys and um, really nice spread here. And this has got some power. My favorite thing to do with this two by two light is to set it up, and we actually have it set up in the Westcott booth that way. And we basically take that and that four by four frame, the DP kit, just take this diffusion off of here and just bounce that right into the four by four frame. And it just comes back and it looks beautiful. Um, huh? Ballast has a dimmer on it. And um, daylight or tungsten, depending on which one you get. Um, this, again, no final, final pricing. I think we're going to be sitting somewhere in the $2,000 range. For a light like this, with this much light output, if you're in the industry, that's a lot of light. Okay? You can always play a couple of these 12 by 12s or 10 by 10s for things that you're doing. Um, the 10 by 10, 12 by 12s are drawing 55 watts, right? So you, you know what the, the light you know, equivalency is going to be. Um, dollar for dollar, when you go into two by two, you're not paying any more per dollar for that light output when you're into two by two, but you get tremendous light output. This is really a portrait size light as well. Uh, you could push this directly through a four by four frame. You could push it through a six by six frame. It could have a lot of versatility with this. So really a great light to bounce and also a great light to go direct in terms of diffusion. That's cool, right? I know you're excited, come on. Um, Let's actually, Dave, can you hand me the one by three? I know it's kind of sitting over there. Um, I am being blocked by, I'm being blocked by a million things here. And we'll kind of get this all straightened out. Thank you so much. I just want to show people this form factor. So, thank you. So this is another one. So this is a one foot by three foot flex light. And to me, what I love about this is We've seen other lights that have similar form factors to this. And this could be a fantastic interview light, but if you shoot narrative, I mean, what a great rim light for a room. Just, you literally gaff tape this thing up. This comes with 150 watt ballast. Um, 150 watt ballast, so we're getting close to a 1.5K tungsten equivalent output. That's a lot of lumens. That's a a crap load of foot candles out of a light, right? So this is really cool. Um, beautiful thing about it is just build a Scrim Jim Cine that's a one foot by three foot Scrim Jim Cine and now you can clamp it to anything. Again, they make all the fabrics for it in that size. So it comes with the ballast, 150 watt dimmable ballast. You can get it in daylight or tungsten. Um, for me, besides the small form factor lights, these are the two ones that make me the most excited in production. They're not going to replace all of my lights. There's plenty of lights that I use because they're harder light sources. Um, I am trying to move away from traditional hot lights if I can. We're starting to see some Fresnel's options in the LED space right now. We have some in the plasma space, um, though you can't generally hot strike those. So there are some disadvantages to plasma technology in my opinion. Um, but we have some pretty exciting things happening in terms of harder 
you know, lens-based LED technology that's happening. Um, but when it comes to, and we have remote phosphor, which is also really exciting to me. I have a lot of remote phosphor lights that I love to use. But nothing can match the portability and the versatility of what we're getting out of a system like this. Because we can make it a rigid base system when we build up the Scrim Gym Cine frames, or we can go ahead and have this really ridiculous, we use gaffer's tape anywhere system. Um, I recently did a job, actually Zach was on the job, and we were uh, down in Texas, and this was the job I was doing where we were doing a behind the scenes of a film riot project. It was a cabin in the middle of nowhere, and we were shooting one of the two shot interviews that I had with Ryan Connolly, and we needed a little bit of a rim. We just needed a little bit of separation. And all we did was, um, I don't have a one by one here, do I? I might. Let's see how things work. Yeah, there you go. By the way, this is, look at this. That's a one by one full kit with a dimmer. That's got all the grip to mount it. That's got everything in there. It might be a 10, it's a 10 by 10, but basically you can fit in the same case. So, I've got three of these in daylight, and I have two of them in tungsten. And what we did, and they're easy to tell, I mean, the, they're, they're numbered as well, but if you look at the phosphor that's on the diodes, if it looks more yellow, that's a daylight one. If it's more orange, then that's your tungsten one. So all we did was we basically had a little rafter, and there was a little space in there, and we needed a rim light. We went like this, and we folded this thing in, and we just tucked it. No A-clamps, no gaffer's tape, no nothing. We just ran this right to the dimmer. Boom, dial it up, dial it down. Come on, guys. This is ridiculous stuff, okay? And it's raining. Who cares if it's raining? As long as the dimmer's not in the rain, you're, you're fine. You can run this stuff off battery. Yes, you can run it off a battery. See, look at what you did. You just segued me into the battery. So somebody, why don't somebody unplug that battery? It can be anybody. I don't care. Um, I, or, or maybe Dave, you know, somehow with this cable, let's bring that over and I'll just talk about it right here, if that's cool. This is uh, Dave Piazza, um, he is from Westcott and I've known him for a long time, national accounts manager. He basically is uh, the other face of Westcott, you know, and he makes sure that, well, you know, that things happen. Keeps people in their place and, and then make sure that we're all eating enough Italian food so that we're, we're happy. So um, this is a brand new battery solution from Westcott. It is, uh, thankfully, uh, it's got a P or D tap right here. So we can just use this with standard P and D tap. And this is a brand new dimmer now, which is um, being used right now with this bicolor version of the Flex, okay? So we do have a bicolor version and we have brightness and we have color temperature. And we also have a another dimmer I was showing you before for the one by two. And we can run both of those off a of battery. Um, this is 144 watt hours, okay? So this has a 55 watt draw, 144 watt hours. Do your math, you're close to three hours on this sucker. See, it's, it, doesn't, it just keeps getting better as I go along, right? You're, you, you guys are excited, I can tell. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we can change things, you know? We can change it up. Again, this is a prototype here, so this is like right brand new. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's at 100%. Pretty good, right? I'll turn it off. Um, not bad for a little fixture. They're definitely, you know, these 10 by 10s and 1 by 1s, you're definitely getting more output than what we were getting in the old days with the original 1 by 1 panels. You know, they, they figured out that formula. So the equivalent output there, again, if you just look at your, without going into lumens and, and foot candles, if we just want to do a tungsten equivalent, which is pretty easy for people to understand, 10 to one efficiency, 55 watt draw, basically about a 550 watt output. So, and you can see it, it's pretty, a little punchy, right? Weighs nothing, pack five or six of them in a the case. You can clamp them, I mean, look at the clamp right here. Um, it's got a little stud mount, it also has a clip. But you can adapt it. I've adapted them, and I've used other different types of grip on them. Is there anything that looks like a barn door for 
Is there anything that looks like a barn door? If you come to the Westcott booth and you look at the 12 by 12, there is essentially a soft box for the 12 by 12. And then you can put a diffusion panel in it. And it's, uh, I'm going to say, three or four inches deep. And it just gets that diffusion panel a little bit further away. And it helps eliminate that spill. Um, but, you know, we're resourceful people. And we didn't want to put a big barn door system on there. Uh, maybe one day we'll see a barn door solution that's based on Scrim Jim Cine. I would love to see something like that. Maybe we won't. Uh, but it would be pretty cool if we had something like that. But I don't know how everything will evolve. What we're seeing here is a gigantic evolution of what essentially was a 10 inch by 10 inch flexible LED solution. And now we're looking at two by twos, one by threes. We're looking at one by twos. Um, we're looking at the 12 inch version that you can put right into the frame based system. And it's just uh, crazy, insane stuff, right? And you have a battery solution, very cost effective. Um, Let's talk about a couple of other things here. Um, and th these things just break down into nothing. Dave, I'm going to hand this. I think I'm just going to place this. I think I'm going to make it over here. Just trying to work with what we have. And I'm going to make that sit. Yeah, it's all right, Dave. I think I've got it. I'm going to make that sit over here. And uh, let's talk about this for a second. So anybody by uh, show of hands ever used an ice light before? So this is essentially. Um, for all of us Star Wars geeks, wait, you might not be able to use that footage anymore. We might have to get clearance for that. Now with Periscope and stuff, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with clearances. Um, this, is, this is called the Ice Light 2. So they've actually had a product called the Ice Light for a while. And it is a uh, basically LED light that is handheld. It's a very nice, soft light source, not unlike a fluorescent type of source that you would see. And it has, um, that's it up at full brightness. It's 50% more output than the original ice light. So this is a really great, basically, traveling key or fill light. I also, many times, will just take something like a ball mount and put it on a light stand. And then they have the flexibility to just move it in any direction. It's also very easy to just fly it off of, you know, a 40-inch arm and... Uh, by the way, you've got a tap here. Remember I talked about the tap right off of the frame system. We could also just put a ball mount on there and just come right off of the top of a frame and actually go ahead and do some pretty interesting stuff with that. Um, one of the other big differences with this particular light over the original ice light is that it has a removable battery. So inside of here, there is an actual battery and they're very inexpensive. They are not expensive, these batteries. Do you know what they are? 50 bucks? Yeah. So, you know, this thing runs for now, what, an hour? About an hour and 15 minutes on a battery. If you had three of these in your kit, you're probably, unless you're just leaving it on all the time, not going to need more than that. It also comes with AC. It comes with the power for that. You don't have to buy that adapter separately. And I think we're looking at about $600 US, 700 549 I like to start high and then uh, come back. Yeah. Show price is four ninety nine. Um, huh? It's an LED inside. It's it's not something you would remove here, so it's already being diffused for you. And it is a daylight fixture. It doesn't come in tungsten, but there is a clip based system here, so you can just go ahead and put a gel over it if you need to. Huh? Yeah. The barn doors are awesome. In fact, um, it's kind of remarkable how how much of a sliver of light you can get out of the barn door even though it's a pretty soft source. And so um, I use the barn door all the time because, you know, I'm bald, so and, and so are a lot of us. I'm just saying, a couple of people here with me. And so when I'm going to go ahead and set a hair light, I'm going to have to go ahead and door that down a little bit, and I just want to create a little separation on the shoulders. So the barn doors are definitely uh, really fantastic for that kind of stuff. So that's basically, you know, some of the stuff that I wanted to talk to you about there. I do want to go over here and give the, the B&H people some challenge. Yeah, or I guess it could come up on the stage. Let's get some of these stands out of the way. And that way um, we'll have a little bit of floor space. Is it easier for you guys back there for me to go over there? Or is it better for us to get this on the stage? What do you want? Doesn't matter? All right. Well, we'll put it on the stage. You know, I'm kind of a go with the flow person. We make it up as we go along. Um, 
So we kind of do what we got to do, and away we go. All right. So if you guys, if you could sense my enthusiasm for the DP kit earlier on, which is the four by, which you can break down into your check luggage, um, then that's nothing compared to what this is. Because this is like, I have three kids, but this is like my fourth child um, <laughs> that I've been working on. And this is called the book light kit. And if you don't know what a book light is, um, also sometimes called a, a seven minute drill, it's essentially, as you can see when you open it up, it's a book. And the concept of a book light is you push light into one side of it to bounce the light, and then it comes through the other side of it so you can diffuse the light. And the end result is an incredibly soft wrapped light source. Um, I've been lighting and shooting interviews and also teaching people how to light and shoot interviews for a long time. And there are favorite ways that I like to light things. Uh, one of them is using a 4x4 frame and bouncing a light into that frame and getting really nice Rembrandt lighting. But sometimes, whether it's for documentary, corporate, or even for narrative stuff, I want to go ahead and push a light in and just have this really wrapped light source. So um, the first version of the book light is this, and it is a 4 foot by 6 foot frame and there are two of them, and they have a swing hinge on the end. So we can actually take this and I can open it up. I don't know, we're gonna whack somebody in the uh, front row here, but if Dave just grabs that, watch yourself, and, and it goes, keep going and it'll go back, and then we can swing it back into the other way, right? So now we can go and fold it into itself. That's pretty cool. You guys are pretty excited about that, I am. And then of course you can just turn it around. Dave, let's go back to the other way. Okay, so that's your swing hinge. And then I'm gonna leave it open like this. This is good, so you guys can see what this thing comes with. So we have, again, prototype, so we don't have the final tubes in here. Um, but what we have is we have silver white, okay? And it's actually the bright white that you're seeing or saw on the DP kit. So it's, uh, again, this is a, a prototype. This is a, a different fabric. It's that bright white. So that's much closer to what we would have in some sort of super bounce. This is what I'm really excited about here. We've got unbleached muslin. And unbleached muslin, even though it does actually absorb some of the light, it's a really great bounce light source because it warms up the light a little bit. I've already got a white in the kit. It doesn't mean I couldn't have bleach muslin, um, but you could, you know, you could obviously cut a piece if you needed to. Um, but this is an unbleached muslin and then black. Okay, so now we have something for negative fill. We have something that we can block light with, we can cut light with. It's a gigantic four by six flag. Um, again, I can see you guys are getting excited about this. So we have three bounce fabrics. Oh yeah it breaks down into 46 inch uh, tubes. So this would be something that you would either travel very easily locally with, or you would go ahead and load it in the back of your vehicle. Not a problem. You could travel into the city with it in a, in a small, I mean 46 is not that high. A few minutes, because it's all interlocking tubes. So I mean, it's no different than what I was showing you earlier on, it's just a larger version of it. Um, so you know, it'll take you five minutes to set the thing up, but then you have this incredible system. Um, Let's talk about this without me uh, taking down the light stand. Oh yeah, look, I'm getting, uh, all right. So then the kit also comes with two diffusion fabrics. Um, the first one is three quarter stop diffusion. And the reason I went with this instead of a full stop or one and a half stop is because not everybody is going to have very, very high output light sources. So I wanted to give people the option that if they were gonna go ahead and bounce off of the white, that they could still get a nice diffused light through that. And the combination of a white bounce along with the three quarter stop diffusion, if you were gonna take something like an Omni light, you can get plenty of output with these large sensor camera systems with a 500 watt Omni or with something like the 12 by flex. So we can actually do that. I usually actually will bounce two 12 by flexes into this when I'm shooting with it. Um, now that it exists, that one by three is gonna be the light that I'm probably gonna use with the book light most often. These LEDs do work fine. You wouldn't put additional diffusion in front of the LED, so you would leave the actual diodes naked, 
and then you would basically bounce that into here and then go through or go through it doesn't matter and I'll talk to you about the versatility of this kit we call it the book like kit but it does so much more so I'll tell you the book does a lot of stuff so you get three quarter stop diffusion and then the other diffusion material we have is a half grid cloth okay half grid is nice because it's a little bit more focused it's not really a half a stop it's really closer to a stop or so um, but I thought half grid would be a really, really nice fabric to have here. So silver white, unbleached muslin black, three quarter stop diffusion, and then we also get the half grid cloth. All right, so here's the thing that um, I want to tell you about this kit. What we're looking at is a four foot by six foot book like kit with the swing hinges. As soon as, and it comes with all these parts, you break this apart. We also give you additional corner connectors so that you can just create two straight four by six panels. Well, now you can go ahead and use one of those panels for negative fill or bounce. You could another, another one for diffusion. Take the book apart. You can also build one six by six frame and also a four by four frame with this kit. The four by four frame can be built because there's eight of them with 22 inch tubes. So if you buy the book like kit and the DP kit, you can have two portable four by four frames that you can travel with. If you have that DP kit that I showed you earlier, you already have all the fabrics you need because you've got one four by four frame which will probably live with the floppy cutter. So you can actually have that four by eight floppy. And then you also have the second frame which you can use with the one stop diffusion or with the silver white. So you can bounce or diffuse your light. You can also buy additional fabrics. So if you wanted to set up a six by six frame from the book like kit and you wanted to have a net, well, we've got double Velcro. You can just go ahead and buy a single net. You can buy a double net. You can buy two double nets and put them together. You can do whatever you want. And again, don't forget, that's not all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's four foot wide. So that means that we can skin this with Roscoe and Lee Diffusion. You can put the gels you want over the frames. So the versatility of the kit is, yes, it's called a book like kit because we haven't had up until this point this sort of freestanding book light. It's very easy to make a book light. Just go, you know, you can go to buy a four by eight piece of beadboard and you can go get a C stand and the 40 inch arm and you can get Diffusion, but you have to keep buying it over and over again. A roll of Diffusion costs 120 bucks. It's not that you don't want to buy it, you could skin this stuff with it, but this is a system that breaks down into a small case that has all the fabrics that you can show up and you can actually just build a book light. The thing about a book light, once you start to use it, especially in situations where you're doing things like interviews, is you set up the book light the right way. It doesn't matter what the shape of somebody's face is. It doesn't matter what their ethnic background is. If it's in the right place, the only problem that you sometimes run into is reflection because it's this nice, big, large panel of light. But other than that, and it's not Rembrandt lighting. You're not using a book light for Rembrandt lighting, but you will see this type of lighting all of the time in narrative, in dramatic work. Um, this allows you to get to that point where you use, you know, and you have that kind of low key lighting very, very easily. If you have a book light kit and you're creating that huge panel of light that's coming out of this side, you also are gonna be pushing a lot of light into the space. Well, if you have the DP kit, you've got a four by eight floppy cutter and you can control that spill very, very easily by just putting that four by eight floppy cutter there. So the idea for me was, yes, two individual kits built on Scrim Jim Cine that you can do very specific things with, but if you combine these two kits together, you have so many different variations. And remember that they're 22 inch tubes, so I can also build two by two frames out of this whole thing. I can build four by four frames. I can build a six by six frame. I can break it up, break it down, do whatever I want to do. The thing is that your fabrics are going to be a little bit larger. Yes, your fabrics are going to be a little larger. So if I decided that I want to take the book light kit and I wanted to build a six by six frame out of it, then I can go to Westcott and, and I can just buy a six by six fabric. I'd say, okay, great. I need a silver white in a six by six, or I need a six by six, you know, grid cloth, or I need a net, whatever it's going to be. So you're just adding fabrics there in that situation. And so the versatility of the system to me, in terms of how you can control and shape light, is pretty dramatic. Um, you know, again, we're not, we're not reinventing the wheel in terms of how people light. 
what I'm trying to do with these systems is introduce people to the way people have been lighting for a long time consistently and get those results. Not a lot of people are setting up something like this to light and shoot interviews, but if they start to do it, the results that they're going to get consistently are going to be very, very high end. It's a pretty small case because the tubes are only 46 inches long. So 46, so no, that's not the final case. The final case would be shorter than that, much smaller than that. I mean, you're talking about your longest tube. Look at the, um, the so tube. The whole thing for the, the whole lighting kit, let's say you have this and yep. you have a couple of those, that, everything's going to be reduced in size. Yes, it's going to be reduced in size to all the way down to a 46 inch length for the book light kit. Look at the DP kit over there. That's basically the length of the case that you would have for that kit. That's pretty small. Yeah, well, that's 46 uh, tubes. But, but of course, it's not going to be four foot by four foot. It's going to be basically four foot by this because everything's going to stack together. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be small. Um, pretty awesome. And it stands up by itself. And it stands up by itself. And so it's a be but if you wanted to, Go ahead and break this thing down and build a 4x4 four four book light kit. You got two swing hinges. You can build two 4x4 four four frames with it. Yep. Go ahead and build a 4x4 four four book light kit. You're going to have to figure out your grip on that and it's where to put it. It's, it's a very close to final prototype, but there are definitely some slight refinements that we're making right now. Um, the things that we know that are here are here, which is it's going to be double Velcroed. It's going to be this size. There are going to be those 3.8. Uh, taps in terms of 3 8 inch taps on all of the tubes you know it's going to essentially look like this when it's finally built um, this one doesn't have 8 22 inch tubes right now but the final one will it's all going to be available at B&H B&H is probably the biggest Westcott reseller there is um, so it's all going to be available there this kit targeted I said that the DP kit we're hoping is going to be around $600 we want this thing to be around $1,000 um, so you combine the two, and you're in that fifteen to sixteen hundred dollar price range. But just think about the versatility you have as a lighting control kit. Um, you know, people will go out and spend three thousand dollars on a shoulder rig for their camera system, and uh, we spend twenty five hundred dollars on a tripod system. And those are necessary buys for certain types of production. Um, people should be looking. And again, we're trying to be cost effective, but also build a kit that's built to withstand many many years of use. So um, does that make sense to everybody? Good. I have no idea what time it is. Have Maybe somebody could tell me. When is this be huh? Like, when is this be awesome. Yeah, that's my normal thing. I'm usually pretty spot on. Um, yeah, five minutes for Q and A, and I'll repeat the question that you asked me. So somebody asked me when is this going to be available. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, early to mid June. Um, we'll be seeing final versions of this product at Cine Gear in Los Angeles and then it will be shipping at that point or just right thereafter. And this is going to play into the absolute vast majority of the production that I do. Yes? Um, you know, the ice light is cool, the flex lights are cool, but you know, when, when do you choose those? You, know, you said you have a ton of instruments. Today. Yes. How do you decide, oh, this is, this is what I'm using, the flex light or the ice yeah. light? Yeah, so the, the question was ice lights are cool, flex lights are cool. I have a ton of lighting instruments. When do I decide when I'm going to use what? Um, a lot of it is dictated by the size and the type of production it is. The truth is that right now, the flex lights are always in my bag because they're so bendable and they play into almost everything that I do. But I might not make that my key source. So I might use a remote phosphor as my key and push that through a frame like this, the book light or the 4x4, um, the DP kit. But I might use that. Um, I'm not using a lot of hot lights anymore. I'm, I am partial to dados because they're so specific and I can do really nice things with them. And I do actually pull out an Ari Fresnel or a, a, you know, a Lowell Omni and use that sometimes. You really can't beat a hot light in terms of color spectrum reproduction. We're getting really close now with LED technology. But if you turn on a quartz-based halogen light and it's a brand new bulb and you strike it, I mean, it's going to be basically 3200 Kelvin full color spectrum. You can't beat it. You make people look amazing. And I use this kit with an Omni all the time. But now that we have that one by three and the portability of it and the fact that it's not producing any heat, this is playing into my key for the book light now. The two by two, 
I've been playing with now as bouncing and actually pushing through the 4x4. Um, I will continue to use different lights from different manufacturers, and you're encouraged to. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. There's not a one-size-fits-all. I always say there's no one perfect camera system for anybody. There's no one perfect light for everybody. Um, it's based on situation and circumstance. So you find the right tools for the right job, and these were the tools that, based on feedback and real-world use, you know, usability, this is what I have been looking for, and I think a lot of people in my industry have been looking for, because I teach a lot of people. I mean, I teach classes all the time. And when I'm here at NAB, I'm here for five days teaching, and each of the classes is generally 100, 150 people for each class. A lot of those people are coming up and they're trying to solve problems because they're in-house corporate, they're working for you know freelance, they're doing all this kind of stuff, and, and most of us are traveling at some point or another, even if it's just locally. Any other questions before we wrap up?